So as you saw the other day, we were pretty busy building the thermal blinds. Now, just to sort of briefly go into that, um, you can buy thermal blind material uh, off the internet and it's essentially a, an aluminium foil bubble wrap on one side and a sort of uh, insulated layer on the other. It's quite expensive, it's about 20, 25 pound a metre and uh, to do this particular vehicle we would have needed about five or six metres to include the, uh, the windscreen and obviously the, the rear. But you can see in the back uh, we've actually done full thermal blind coverage now, I'm really pleased with the way it's turned out. And I've just done the front windscreen. I'm just going to show you quickly what we did. Now it's quite difficult to get um, the full size. So we had an old sleeping bag lying about. Now you might have seen in the previous, uh, one of the previous episodes that we bought a sleeping bag, which was fine. It turned out this one was actually a lot easier with the vertical stitch lines. It came out a lot better and uh, it had a nicer filling to work with. But anyway, have a look at that if you're interested to see how we made them. But essentially, we've left a little bit of extra fabric on the bottom of this. So when you actually um, tuck it into the windscreen, I don't know if you can see that. So we, it's actually a full blind and we've got the foil on one side, as you can see there. And then we pull these down. It's pretty simple. And then you've got some of the sleeping bag here that you can tuck in to fill the gaps and that's just going to make sure that it's all nicely insulated and there's, uh, you're going to stay nice and warm. So we've done that, now what I'm going to do is just we put the blinds up on the front doors as well. Um, you can see behind me that we've got these, uh, these, this shock cord and that's designed to keep pin the, the uh, thermal blinds in place. We'll get them all fitted now and uh, just kind of show you the inside of the vehicle. It's pretty dark, um, but we'll do our best. For the battery, for the power on the vehicle, we didn't bother fitting a split charge system. I have got one. I've got a, I've got a sort of portable power pack, which I could have installed, but really we're not going to be using enough juice to warrant a leisure battery split charge system. But what we have fitted is a leisure battery. Now, it's quite expensive. It's an Odyssey battery. These vary really from anything from two to 300 quid. Uh, it's a PC1500, um, it's a really good battery because the idea is behind it, it's great for cranking, you can run it really really low on the juice but still get the cranking amps for a, for a car. Now because this petrol doesn't require that many cranking amps anyway so we were okay there. But to make sure that uh, we weren't going to run out of juice, what we did is we actually uh, connected these two cables here and they run all the way to the front. to a battery monitor system there look and the idea is that we can always keep an eye on what power we're using because we're just going to be charging phones and laptops and things like that nothing major so um, not running TVs or anything like that but it gives us an idea of what we're using and if it gets too low we can just switch everything off and make sure we've got enough power or even start the engine and charge it a little bit and it was just a simple install just run the wires through and it's, uh, it's really easy and if I just show you here we actually lift this back section up and that stays like that and then this one here also comes up and gets taken out of the vehicle. And you can see what we have is a cooker station. And there you are, you've got yourself uh, a sink for uh, you know, cleaning up, washing, uh, doing the dishes, but actually storing as well kettles, bowls, pans, things like that that you're gonna be using for your cooking because on this side, remove the drain and you've got yourself a hob. Now this unit was 135 pound. Um, it's it's a really nice simple uh, addition and you can see just behind there the gas pipe that goes over to the left now the gas bottle isn't left in the vehicle we keep that outside the vehicle uh, we're going to keep it in the roof box and then obviously when we want to camp it's just quickly um, you just literally screw it on it's a camping gas system so really pleased with that and it just all tucks away neatly just lower those down there so you've got that in place and we've got our second fixing and we drop that in and there we go, that's all away. So I'm now gonna get the bed out and show you how that works. So Volvo have given us, uh, so Volvo have come up with a really nice uh, platform for converting an estate car into a camper because not only does the floor and the seats all fold down completely flat, but you've got ample space. The seats extend, slide forward right into the cabin area, uh, out of the way, uh, more than you'd need. I mean, you couldn't drive it with them uh, as far forward as they go. So that's just great for a camper because it gives you loads more headroom. So much so that we've actually achieved six foot two as a sleeping space in the back. And uh, I'll just set up the extension now. And uh, just to, to make it clear, we actually move the seats forward all the way uh, before we set the, uh, the... So it's pretty straightforward. We've got these two table legs here that we bought from B&Q. They were 9.99 each. So a tenner each, two of those. They've got an adjustable foot and uh, We've actually got here, 
you can see there's a receiver on the back of the plate so we're just using those we're going to slot them in and they're supported and that gives us the perfect uh, amount of uh, headroom so that's one of the uh, head extensions in place just to show you just how simple these are you just literally spin it round and again screw that in now what we've done here is because Volvo uh, in their wisdom had uh, some vehicles had integrated dog guards in the back of the seats so they've left these flaps so we've just basically utilized that as a um, securing system so if you're doing it on a different vehicle just have a look and see what features your vehicle's got that might enable you to uh, to do this kind of thing so I'll just get the other in place and give you an idea go okay, it's a bit tricky with one hand but to give you an idea we're gonna lock that in there and it's in place so there we go there's the extension for the uh, the headroom and then what we do is we just put the seats back again now just to uh, pinch it all into place so it stays uh, stays secure so there we have the extension, the head extensions. Now I've actually had some of this uh, memory foam, memory mat, just kicking about in the uh, in the unit. So I've glued that on there just to give it a bit more uh, comfort. Don't know why, but also it helps us locate uh, the actual board in there and it all slots together and stays in place. So that's uh, what we've done there. And you can see we've got the seats now pinned back onto it and it's all fixed nicely. So we'll get the bed out now and that'll give you a really good idea of what it's like. So there we go, there's the sleeping area behind me. Uh, it's double, it's a double uh, mattress, it's a double sleeping bag, six foot two, plenty of room um, and it's comfy. And you can see as well in here, we've actually got all the thermal blinds up. So right the way to the front, including the front windscreen, all the sides, it's all thermally insulated. We, uh, we put some thermally insulated sheets um, earlier on in the uh, headliner, which we showed you. But you know, it's a good, really good comfy space. It's quiet. Uh, we've got the skylight there, which has got a blackout blind on it. So when we need to sort of uh, get some sleep, we can. Uh, but um, you know, I couldn't really uh, do any better than this. The only thing we could perhaps improve on is the mattress, which we can look at. And um, we've also got some thermal sheeting left over from when we made the thermal blinds. And we're gonna use that underneath the mattress just to reflect some of the uh, body heat when we're sleeping, just so we don't lose any, any heat. Because uh, no matter how much insulation you use, it's not going to be warm because there's no there's no heating inside. So uh, that'll be the starting point. If we find we're too hot, we can get rid of it. So there we go. A couple of other things I need to show you is the battery monitor system, which I'll do now, and then we might actually try and get the awning up the back for the full experience. We've basically got ourselves set up now. This is how our boot camp is going to work. So we've got the awning fitted to the tailgate, as you can see there, and uh, everything else is in place. The bed's all made, gives us a nice bit of living space at the back. If it's raining, we can put chairs in there. We can uh, just relax, chill out. Um, not really enough cover for getting changed in privately, but uh, you know, it's, it's a nice space. A couple of things we need to do. We're gonna have to get a telescopic, probably a, a paint roller pole to make sure that the tailgate stays up because with the extra weight of the awning, it's uh, sort of sagging a bit. So we'll get that, that's for safety, just so it doesn't come down. We'll get the, uh, the tent pitched out a bit better and we're ready to rock and roll. So hopefully you've enjoyed watching us build the camper. And uh, if you have, please like and subscribe. We'll be doing some more interesting projects soon. But for now, we'll say goodbye and uh, please do scroll down and see how we did each of the different elements of the build and uh, enjoy.